Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a really awesome desktop mode for Motorola Android devices. And if you watch my channel, you know I'm a big fan of desktop mode when it comes to these tablets and phones. One of my favorites being Samsung DeX, but for the past few months I've actually been using this Motorola device here with their new desktop mode called Ready4. Now I'm not a huge fan of the name, I think they should definitely change it to get more people interested in it, but this is definitely one of the best that I've tested so far and one of the coolest things about the newer updates they put out, it now supports 4K 60 FPS. So we can get 4K resolutions out of USB Type-C to HDMI to our favorite monitor or television. And if you're not familiar with Android's desktop mode, basically what this allows you to do is turn your phone into a desktop PC. I mean, it's obviously going to be running Android here, but it does give us access to resizable applications and multi-window applications. So we can actually run several different apps at the same exact time using desktop mode on a device like this. And by the way, the phone I'm using here is the Motorola X30. It's got that Snapdragon Gen 1 CPU, so we've got a lot of power. And this one just happens to be the 8 gigabyte version, but I think you can get this up to 12. Not all of Motorola's phones support Ready4. I think the lowest end one is the G100, but it's actually a really decent device. The main reason I opted to pick this device up was because it had that Snapdragon Gen 1, so we can get some really awesome emulation and gaming out of the way. And when it comes to some of the easier to emulate stuff, we can go up to 4K with it, and it looks absolutely beautiful going from USB Type-C to HDMI. Ready for it does support wireless displays, but I'm not exactly sure if you can do 4K. Either way, it's always best to go wired with it. You're going to have zero latency there because we've got a wired connection. And you can go about this several different ways. If your monitor or television supports USB Type-C video, you can plug it directly in there. Or you can use a cheap adapter from Amazon. There's a few available. I'll leave some links in the description. Setup is really easy. I'm using the docked adapter here. It's got USB 3.0. It's got micro SD card support, full-size SD card support, and USB Type-C in for charging. But all I need to do is plug it directly in. We've got the dock plugged in to HDMI on the monitor, and it pops right up for us. We can use the screen as a trackpad to control the operating system on the external monitor, or you can go ahead and plug in a mouse and keyboard to make it a real nice PC experience. But as soon as you plug this in, you'll notice we've got four different sections. We've got our gaming section. This is really just going to kind of line up all of our games. Same thing with the video chat and the media area. It'll throw in Netflix, YouTube, and everything like that. But my favorite part about this whole operating system is the desktop itself. It supports 720 up to 4K60, and right now I'm actually set at 4K. You can do it directly from the Ready4 app on the device itself, or you can go into the settings in desktop mode and change it from there. You can also resize the icons, but if I go down to 720, you'll see that the resolution on the external monitor does change. Go back up to 4K here, and uh, from here, I know it's really hard to see. We do have a section to kind of scale all of these applications up, and the font itself. That way, it does make it a little easier to see when you're running at a 4K resolution. But I wanted to run it like this because I wanted to see what we could do at 4K. Now, a lot of these Android games aren't going to run at a native 4K, but they still look amazing on a decent display. But when it comes to emulation and video, we can output 4K resolutions. So in desktop mode, we have all of our apps lined up right here. If you've ever used Windows or any kind of variant of Linux or even Mac OS, then you'll be good to go using this. We've got multi-app support, so we can open up several apps at a time. It does have a snap function, so we can snap one over to the right-hand side and one over to the left-hand side. All of this is resizable. Just go up here, snap it to the right, take this calculator, go full screen with it, and we can snap this over to the left. So having a nice little workspace is super easy with Ready4. But I'm going to get right into some testing because I want to show you how this performs. First up, we're going to do a little bit of 4K video playback from YouTube. Okay, so I'm using the stock version of YouTube directly from Google Play. We'll hit up a 4K 60fps video. And from the settings, I want to make sure that we are set to 4K. And in a second, I'll show you stats for nerds running because it does do 4K 60 really well here. And we're just streaming over Wi-Fi 6. This is actually really awesome to see a true 4K resolution at 60Hz coming out of a phone like this over USB. Again, I have not tested this wirelessly. I'm pretty sure it would do it, but uh, if you want to do any gaming or emulation, I would highly recommend using a wired connection. That way you have no latency whatsoever. 
Going wireless while trying to play a game will introduce a ton of lag, and actually my home network just really doesn't do a great job, but streaming video should be just fine. Bit closer here with stats for nerds, you can see that our viewpoint is 3840 by 2160. We're at 60 hertz here, and it's a true viewpoint. We've only got three drop frames out of 4500 now. So it does 4K60 really well. Moving over to some gaming, we've got Asphalt 9. Now I still have the resolution of the desktop set up for 4K, but this game isn't going to scale up to 4K. It still looks really good though. I'm not sure of exactly what resolution this game renders at, but it's got to be at least 1080p because it is super clean. And by the way, I'm just using an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth. You could go wired with it to eliminate any kind of Bluetooth latency, but I'm really used to it, and with a lot of this stuff, I don't notice it much at all. Alright, so I've just swapped out my monitor here for this one that does support USB Type-C video in. And as you can see, we've still got this Motorola device connected. Just a single cable now. And this monitor has USB input, so I've got my mouse and keyboard already plugged in, ready to go. Before I move over to some emulation, I did want to test out Apex Legends Mobile. And uh, we're at Ultra HD. I believe, yeah, if you can take a look in the bottom left-hand corner, it's running at 60 FPS, and it does look pretty good on this bigger display. Again, I don't think this is running at 4K, but it still looks great. So yeah, basically anything that supports a controller on Android will work really well on an external display. Something like Genshin Impact, at least at the time of making this video, doesn't natively support controllers, but you could use a third-party app to play it if you want to. But you know, my favorite thing to do with these more powerful Android devices over HDMI is emulation. And the first one we have here is PSP using PPSSPP, got the standalone version here. 10x resolution, Vulcan back in with Tekken 6. Something like Chains of Olympus, we can go up to 6x. It's not quite 4K, but it still looks great. This here is totally maxed out, and it definitely looks like a whole nother game. Next up, we've got N64, and with this, it's not quite running at full speed when we're up to 4K, but it will at 1440p. You know, upscaling these N64 games does make a difference to a certain point. Even though EtherSX2 is such a great PS2 emulator for Android, uh, there's still a lot of games that just can't run at 4K resolutions. Even one of the easier ones here, we've got Crash Bandicoot, we're so close to 4K. But, uh, you know, going up to a larger display like this with that upped resolution does make a huge difference. But yeah, this emulator's getting better every day, and some of the best performance I've seen is out of the Snapdragon Gen 1. And with this game here, which is an easier one to emulate, we're right there at the edge of 4K. Next up, we've got Gran Turismo 4, 3x resolution. I mean, it's pretty awesome to be playing PS2 on an ARM chip at full speed with a nice upscale going on a larger display. So obviously, I'm a huge fan of these devices with desktop mode built in. One of my favorites is Samsung DeX, but it's been a bit stagnant. I mean, ever since the Galaxy S9 and the S10 on up to the S22, We've basically got the same features, and they've actually removed some of the features that I used to love. Motorola Ready 4 isn't a great name, but it's a newer desktop mode, so they have been kind of updating it continuously, and hopefully it keeps going. One thing I'd love to see from Motorola is to have this implemented on their lower-end devices. Like I mentioned, the lowest-end device right now is the G100. It's still a bit pricey for what it is. You get a Snapdragon 775. It does perform well, but that's like the lowest price one you can get with Ready4 built in. So it would be really awesome to see this come to their lower tier devices. It would definitely help out with sales, and when it comes to Motorola itself and the mobile phone market, I've been sleeping on it, so have a lot of other people, but they've been doing some really great stuff. And this is one of my favorite desktop modes right now, and it's only getting better as time goes on. So with this, you've got an awesome 4K media player, you've got a full-fledged Android desktop, and as you saw, you can basically turn one of these into a little gaming console slash emulation device with ease. And as long as the game supports controllers natively, at least a native Android game, and basically all of the emulators out there with Android support will work with controllers. 
But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. And if you're using Motorola Ready 4 right now on a lower end device than the one you saw in this video, does it support 4K resolutions? I don't have one on hand, so I really can't test it. I'd actually like to know. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.